In this unit, I'm going to go over tests of significance and measures of association for categorical data. Don't forget that means nominal and ordinal variables. I'm going to begin by discussing tests of significance for nominal or ordinal variables. Remember, tests of significance tell you whether or not a relationship exists between your variables, not how strong that relationship is. First, you must establish a relationship before you begin investigating it in greater depth. Tests of significance work by comparing what happened in your sample versus what would have happened if those, two, if those variables weren't related at all. Independence refers to there being no relationship between the variables. What would have happened if there were independence, and what actually happened in your sample? Is the difference between what would have happened under independence and what happened in your sample large enough to warrant us determining that it's statistically significant? The p-value tells us the odds that any difference you see could have resulted from chance. Generally, those that use inferential statistics agree that if we're 95% confident that there's a real difference, we can reject the null. As we discussed in previous units, some people will set their p or alpha at 0.1 or at 0.01, but p is most commonly set at 0.05. For nominal and ordinal variables, chi-squared is an appropriate test of significance. In this class, this is the one we're going to use, but be aware there are other things you could be using. The value of chi-squared is always positive. It will range from zero to no maximum value. It has unlimited potential values. A chi-squared value of zero means that the variables are completely independent. They are not related at all. The larger the value of chi-squared, the more likely it is you're going to discover your variables are related. Remember, we're not going to look at the actual value of chi-squared to get our result. We're going to look at the p-value, or the significance. If that's less than 0.05, we can reject the null. Let's use chi-squared in an example. I have a data set from a post-election survey conducted by one of these classes. In this data set, we, can, we collected demographic information and how individuals voted. I'm going to hypothesize that there's a gender difference in how Californians voted on Proposition 9, the legalization of marijuana. The null hypothesis would be that there's no relationship between gender and how one voted on Proposition 9. First, let's take a look at a cross-tabulation of gender by how one voted on this measure. Remember, we're going to follow the Dr. Ick rule. The dependent variable is going to go in the row and the independent in the column. Obviously, gender is the independent. In this sample, we had so few transgender people that I had to eliminate them from the analysis because we wouldn't have been able to make any um, assumptions about them based on our data. What do you see when you look at the cross-tabulation? Right off the bat, it looks like there might be a relationship. Notice that of men, 50.6% voted yes, whereas of women, only 382 voted yes. If you were to calculate epsilon, you would see it's more than 10%, a good clue that we're going to find a relationship. Remember, I said that chi-squared worked by comparing what happened under independence to what happened in your actual sample. How would you calculate what would have happened under independence if you wanted to know? For any cell on the table to figure out what would have occurred under independence, you multiply the row total by the column total and then divide that by the total number of people in the sample. This is your prediction for independence for each cell. For example, 115 women voted yes on Proposition 9. Under independence, we would predict that 301 times 232 divided by 532, or 131 would have voted yes under independence. That's a bit more. 
So is there a statistically significant relationship? Can we reject the null? In lab, we've gone over exactly how you produce these tables. Let's take a quick look at the results. As you can see in this chi-squared table, our results are indeed statistically significant. How did I know that? Well, I looked at the asymp sig column. Notice for Pearson's chi-squared, the actual value is 8.8 .8, with two degrees of freedom. That's that column labeled df. In the final column, the asymp sig two-sided, you can see that chi-squared's p-value is 0 0.012. 0 0.012 would be less than 0 0.05. Therefore, I can reject the null. My hypothesis was supported. Now that we've determined our relationship exists, the question is how strong is it? Our test of significance didn't tell us anything about the strength of the relationship. For this, we need the appropriate measure of association. Measures of association for nominal and ordinal variables are based on the concept of proportionate reduction of error, often referred to as PRE measures. In this case, what we mean by this is that information about one variable can improve our prediction of the other. If I know your score on the independent variable, I'll make a better guess at what your score on the dependent variable is likely to be. In other words, I've reduced the error I've made by some measurable proportion. The better my guess gets if I know something about you, specifically your score on the independent variable, the stronger or higher the measure of association is going to be. This slide gives us the conceptual formula for measures of association for nominal and ordinal variables, and it's the actual formula for lambda, the measure of association we're most likely to use if we have two nominal variables. In this case, we take the errors of prediction you make when you ignore the score on the independent variable, you just guess, minus the errors of prediction made when your prediction is based on the independent variable, divided by the number of errors you would have made when you ignored the independent variable. Don't worry, I'm not going to test you on the formula. PRE measures generally range from 0 to the absolute value of 1. Some measures only range from 0 to 1. If a, if a nominal variable is involved in your association, obviously you can't have a direction, so it's got to only range from 0 to 1. If you have two ordinal variables involved, your measure of association might range from negative 1 to positive 1. In this case, the closer the value is to zero, the weaker the association. The closer the, the value is to either negative or positive one, the stronger the association. A PRE of zero indicates no association at all. A PRE of plus or minus one indicates perfect association between those variables. That would mean you would be correct 100% of the time if you use the independent variable to predict the dependent variable. This is my handy guide for interpreting the strength of measures of association. You'll notice it's slightly different from one of our textbooks. I'll be careful on the exam to make sure our examples only fall into things on which the textbook and I agree. You'll notice, however, that we do both agree that from the point one level out, it's worth noting. Even if it's point one or point two, which would be a weak association, that's still worth considering. Remember, in the social sciences, we don't expect an independent variable to have a tremendous impact on a dependent variable. There are many factors in the social world that could be affecting behavior. Some PRE measures can give the direction as well as the strength. If you're using a measure appropriate for ordinal variables, you may also be able to obtain the strength, the direction of the relationship in addition to the strength. If you have two ordinal variables and your PRE measure is positive, this means as one goes up, the other goes up. 
If it's negative, that means as one goes up, the other goes down. It's an inverse relationship. Next, I'm going to go over some measures of association. And then we're going to talk about which ones I want you to focus on for this class. I just wanted to touch on several, just so you know there's many different ones you could use. The most basic measure of association for, for nominal variables is lambda. Lambda works best for nominal binomial associations. Obviously, since it's only for nominal variables, there's no direction. It's asymmetric. Sometimes, with SPSS, you get a 0, 0.00 value of lambda. In this case, use Kramer's V instead to confirm. Sometimes SPSS glitches when you're using lambda. Also, it's important with lambda to follow the doctoric rule. It matters which is the dependent and which is the independent. Kramer's V is a great measure of association if you have nominal binomial or nominal by ordinal data. Again, because it's for nominal variables, it's asymmetric, meaning it won't give you the direction. In fact, if you have nominal by ordinal data, I would consider this your best choice measure of association. The contingency coefficient is another measure of association that can be used with nominal and ordinal data. However, the upper limit on this one depends on the number of columns and rows in the table. This can be confusing for novices, therefore I'd suggest using Kramer's V. V is also for nominal or ordinal data. It will give you the direction, even though a nominal variable is involved. How's that? Well, phi only works for two by two tables, where there's two columns and two rows. In that case, really all it's telling you is that as you move from one column, do you move to the upper or the other or the lower? Phi is your best choice for two by two tables. Gamma is the appropriate measure of association for ordinal by ordinal or ordinal by dichotomous nominal variables. It's symmetric, so it will give you the direction as well as the strength of the relationship. If you're working with ordinal by ordinal relationships, we're going to be using gamma for this class. Summers D also works for ordinal by ordinal associations, but, as it, but it's asymmetric, so it won't give you the direction as well as the strength. So why not use gamma and get the strength too? Kendall's tau B is also appropriate for ordinal by ordinal data. It's symmetric, meaning it will give you the direction as well as the strength, but it's only appropriate when the number of rows and number of columns are equal. Again, this can be a little confusing when you first get started using this kind of measure. Therefore, let's just use gamma for this class. Kendall's tau C is also an appropriate measure of association for ordinal data, and like Kendall's tau B, it's symmetric, so it'll give you the direction as well as the strength. However, you can only use Kendall's tau C when the number of rows and number of columns are not equal. Again, a confusion. Let's use gamma. Now in our example, we have nominal by ordinal data. Really, it's a two, it could be considered a two by two if I had made not voting one of the a missing option. In this case, though, since we have not voting as a valid option, I have a two by three table, and I'm going to use Kramer's V. We can see in this table that the results of Kramer's V is 0.129. Weak, but worth noting. So gender is part of the picture as to why this proposition fails. So how do I know what to do? Just to review, when I'm ready to test my hypothesis to establish if there's a relationship between the variables, I want to use a test of significance. When I use that test, I want to focus on whether the p-value in the chi-square table, this will be labeled as asim sig, if that value is above or below 0.05. If it's below 0.05, I can reject the null. If I want to discuss how strong a relationship is, then I want to use a measure of association. 
I want to focus on the value column of the table, not the SIG column. If it's more than the absolute value of 0 0.01, it is worth noting. So how do I know which test to use? Well, as in every other case, what test you use depends on the level of measurement of your data. If your data is categorical, nominal or ordinal, in this class we're going to use chi-squared as the test of significance. If it's nominal by nominal, lambda will be your measure of association. If it's a two by two table, phi will be your measure of association. If it's nominal by ordinal, Kramer's V will be your measure of association. If it's ordinal by ordinal, gamma will be your measure of association. Of those listed above, only gamma is symmetric, meaning it provides direction as well as strength. In the next module, I'll go over what you need to do if you're working with interval ratio level data.